on y'all this is chapter 200 we got a new forbidden limited list update out of the blue so konami hit us with a can um an updated forbidden list it comes out on december 11th that's what really pokes out to me right when i saw this forbidden and limited list we have a week before they do implementing that that's a good thing for konami because two weeks was just way too long especially when you're trying to you know you're glad that you have these nerves and you're wanting it to hurry up and happen and you're waiting two weeks so people are just playing these pre-nerf decks on you all the time because they can't get rid of them and it gets exhausting trying to play the game and you're just you know you're waiting on the forbidden and limited list to come through so definitely a uh, good part on konami's side hopefully they continue this um, one week should be at least enough time for people to kind of adjust and get away from the pre-nerf decks and do finishing doing any finishing climbs that they're trying to do before the limited um forbidden list comes into play so i am glad for that but yeah let's jump into it so invoker to one man invoker kokaitis to one so this is like i remember back when we streamed um when this box came out and kokaitis was noticeably the best one to stand out because it was unaffected it was pretty much you just couldn't target it you couldn't destroy it and you could attack and defense which was just really powerful especially when we combine it with um concentrating current man we showed that off in dual links menace <laughs> in dual links meta dual room and wrecked everybody <laughs> And I remember on our first stream, man, we were wrecking a lot of people just because of that combo. And now, Konami finally took notice and limited the card. Because I'm getting so tired of of a Kokaitis wall just blocking me from doing anything. And, you know, now it's just getting to the point where, you know, it, like I said, they're saying it improves the pacing of the duels. I agree. The Ko, um, the Kokaitis concentrating current combo is just too, it's becoming almost just too degenerate to the point they just end duels fast with just a two card combo with an um because of alistair pretty much definitely need to be hit now they can't play you know limited one they can only play one so once you get rid of this one they can't bring out any more which is a really good um upside invoked magellanica oh my god limited to two limited to two man this card will be limited to prevent Alistair the Invoker decks from having access to powerful limited two cards. I love it because I always hated Magellanica with Econ and Tretch. That completely blockades the deck off. I don't think I'll see anyone play one in one. I think they'd be unfeasible because one Magellanica is just not enough. You need to be able to bring out another one for a follow-up play. Definitely needed to get hit. Um, especially with all the URs and Invokers, like I said, the Fusion and um, Al um, Alistair. You know, hitting the fusions is um, is a good move on Konami's part. And I've, I've, I've seen this coming anyway. Like, the only way they were going to hit them was going to hit the fusions, so they can't be able to spam fusions as much. Um, they will be, there will be an uptake in Purgatrio. So now, if you're going to be playing... Um, so now, with these hits, what you're going to have to do is at least go for your second Purgatrio. Since these have been hit, um, Purgatrio is probably going to be one of your main plays. Maybe just set up set it up so you can use your purgatory to play on your opponent so yeah two purgatory kills might be the, the most optimal build now because these two cards have been hit because now you have space in your extra deck this also helps um and this might just be like an underlying thing this also can help decks that use the invoke alistair engine now because you can only pretty much play what four um invoke cards up to four or five if you play two burger trio but now you have room to play other cards in your extra deck so let's say you play a synchro build now you can play about what three three um three other synchro monsters in your extra deck now because of this limitation if you don't play burger trio or you can just play one of each and you probably play a semi-limited card and throw in four synchro monsters or something like that something around that area or one in one one burger trio yeah and three synchro monsters and they play a um, semi-limited card in your deck. So there's some options to do with it, but it is barely, it is heavily um, hindered. So your opponent, you know, so your opponent can't just spam fusions on you. And I think that's the point Konami is trying to get across. Black Wings. We just got this card. We had just got Rikiri the Rain Shower. And now Konami hit is like, nope, this card is way too far from Black Wings. And people are running more than one. 
So this card will be limited to prevent Blackwing decks from having access to powerful limited two cards. Yes. So I understand the reasoning they hit this too, so they don't have access to Econ or Trash. Even though, like I said, I always play Rekuri at one, so I've never had that much of a problem playing it at two. Um, but you know, playing one Trash, you, I mean, you can't play two Treaches in there, which is good, or a Treach and Econ. So I mean, if they do play a Treach, you know, they're gonna have to just open up with it and still open up into Blackwing, which is possible. But I still see there's going to be an influx of Blackwind Close, Floodgate, and Cyclone in this deck. That was probably going to be the main three cards that are probably going to see an upsurge in the Blackwind deck due to the Rikiri hit. And a lot of people played it with one Rikiri anyway, so it's not that big adjustment in the extra deck department. But, you know, you will see a lesser play in Treacherous, definitely Econ. I think you're going to see more like, you know, that single treacherous decks if they do continue with the treacherous. Also, we got Kiteroid. Kiteroid hit, yes, dude. This was another perfect hit, man. This kills the Invoke Roid deck, which was just cancer. Because I get, you get tired of them searching for Kiteroid every time. And now you can't play Kiteroid with Invokes anymore because you have to play an either or, and I doubt there would ever be a feasible deck that just plays one in one unless they play more Purgatrials than anything. You know, they mainly pride their build on Purgatrials than Magellanica. I mean, that is a possibility, but I don't think it'll be that consistent, honestly. So I think that definitely does hurt the deck. You definitely don't expect Kyroid to be played much in invokes or to a point where Kyroid would be an amazing just discovery if they do still play him. Which can actually be still be a possibility, you know. We don't know how the meta will evolve, but you know, Kyroid can still be played in invokes and they just can't play other cards. Like concentrating current. We'll get to that right quick though. Um uh, Metaphys still is I mean it doesn't affect Metaphys because they don't normally play uh, semi limited card. I think the only hit that it did on Metaphys is they can't play Clash, and I have seen a couple of Metaphys decks play Clash. So they can't play Clash if they're going to play Kite Roid. So they're going to have to make that little sacrifice. But I mean, there's already clear build, clearly build Metaphys decks that don't run Clash. And so it didn't really hit Metaphys to that, you know. It didn't really hit Metaphys at all, pretty much. Very minimum hit on the Metaphys decks. But like I said, a very big hit on Kite decks that like the main Kite Roid. You can't be able to play other cards other than Kite Roid, which is a very good and big hit that I 100% agree with. Because Kite Roid is just been very cancerous in this meta i can't even lie it's been a very cancerous card but yeah on the concentrating current yes dude and speaking of going back to when we first um going back to when we first played the deck we played concentrating current and this card has literally like i even said concentrating current with cositis cocytis and magellanica are just too broken it was it's just too broken because your opponent can't really play around it it has the potential to end those quickly exactly it's just you know you're you're sitting there hoping your opponent can't otk you now with purgatrio it doesn't matter you're not safe because of concentrating current you're not safe at all and it's just not it is just not a fair card it's just not with invokers so i'm glad they hit it to where you know you have to play concentrating current or cotroid or one concentrating current and one magellanica and you know I think it, it it throws these cards out the deck pretty much if you want to keep running Magellanica. So pretty much, you know, I could see someone like trying to sneak in one just for the surprise factor, Kite Roid or Concentrating. I think Concentrating would probably be the better card than Kite Roid, honestly. The aggressive side is just too much, but I, I definitely want to play it. Um, Iron Core of Kawaki Miru did too. So it's kind of like they're reversing the roles between these two cards. But you guys already know, Kawaki Core of Kawaki Miru back at three. So if you invest in Diamond Core, you are luck. Your money is gonna fight for you once again because now the Chop of Mirus are back. So expect to see some more Chop, some more Chop of Miru decks in the future. The eleventh, when this skill change, I mean the um, card change comes into effect, we're playing some Kawaki Mirus and some pre nerf. Let me sorry, some post post nerf decks. So expect some. I don't have um I don't have the element sabers. Like I don't have um two of the whatchamacallit. Uh what is it? Element saber molehue. I don't have three molehues, so I can't be able to give you an updated version of that. I may have to leave that to other people. 
but I can definitely show you versions of. I could probably show. Nah, Roy deck is dead. I could. I will show, definitely show you versions of Black Wings that you can play with this hit that I think would be very well. Like I actually my Casey Cut build that I could um also to, um, follow me on Twitch. I normally stream on Twitch. You could definitely watch me there. But I do have a Black Wing build that pretty much is already good. And meets the requirements for the post nerf because I've always I've always played one Rikiri because I'm always able to bring it back, which isn't that much, which is that which isn't that big of a problem. Sorry, can't even speak today. Um, so you know that is not that big of a hit. I could definitely show you, put you in the right direction of how to play Black Wings. So definitely look into Twitch. You know we always have fun there. I think you'll have an explosive fun. I am coming out with a highlight video of a very glorified deck that I think is going to be good that just came out, the structure deck that people kind of shun on, but, you know, I don't see why, but back to the review. So, yeah, Diamond Core of Kwaki Miru, I can't wait to play Kwaki Miru's again. I've been waiting to, I've, I've always, I, like I said, I kind of was had mixed feelings about him hitting Diamond Core, but, I mean, I guess it was a must back in that meta, and this is what saddens me. Come on, Konami. Come on, why bring back spell books? You're talking like, this is kind of what I don't like. When you have decks that are degenerate, like DNA, Buster Blader, spell books, burn, stall, things of that nature, to a certain extent, six samurai. Why, why, why go through the trouble of bringing these cards of these decks back? Like, I guarantee you, if we had a poll, um, versus do we want this deck back compared to not i think you're i'm i'm pretty sure that people are not going to want spellbooks back in the game because for one the deck is boring after a little bit second it's a nightmare to go against you know you like people used to play seal tomb people still do play seal tombs but you know when the time when people don't stop playing seal tombs and then, then they just keep running against spellbooks you know it's a frustrating thing to keep going against this deck because fate is it's it's too hard to play around almost it's almost virtually just hard on like depending on your hand virtually impossible to play around and it is just ridiculous and it's not fair and it's not fair and it's, it is just not fair so you know trying to strengthen this deck back up you know I, I i don't think it should come back at least for a long time at least for a long time just to get that keep the degeneracy out the game well yeah you know that's my view on spell books um, Eternity won't make that much of a change, especially with the light and dark scale nerf. So, like I said, I don't think spellbooks will have a resurgence. But, you know, anything to encourage spellbook players, I'm totally against because I get tired of seeing spellbooks. I really do. Like, spellbook, spellbooks just needs to stay dead, honestly, in my opinion. You know, the game's better without the deck. The game really is better without it. But, yeah. All right, so let's talk about how... You know, and I'll even I'll even touch Element Saver invokes on this too. How decks are gonna adjust to this ban list? Well, Roy decks I think are gonna be dead in general. I think they're gonna be totally inconsistent. You know, unless the new box changes that, but I doubt it. But who knows? Who knows? You know, and I think Roy was just a degenerate deck for the Kite Roy search, but now since they can't really play Kite Roy and Magellanica to their full advantage, I think the deck is just better off not to be played. You're better off going to Element Saber Invokes, which is, I think, is still the better deck. It really, you know, you're not having to trust on those Kite Roy plays just to make a play. Um, the deck is pretty good on its own. Element Sabers is, I think, is a lot more consistent as far as getting the plays going. It's a little bit slower, but I mean, the the Roy deck is pretty slow as well because it's more of a reactive deck. So I am kind of glad because I think, like I said, the whole offspring of you know, these combos and in turning into a Roy invoke deck was just kind of like I said, I think that it had its own degeneracy to play a part in. And I'm glad they I'm glad that deck is dead. But yeah, invoke element sabers. Um I think cars people are gonna start playing. Um you're gonna start seeing an uptick in floodgates. Maybe um you're gonna see a, definitely see an uptick in floodgates and power maybe power of the guardians. Because now since Concentrating Current has been hit, they're going to have to find a new card to make their monsters like, especially since Kokaitis is going to be very scarce now, they're going to have to figure out ways to keep Kokaitis on the field, especially for the stall factor and keeping them, um, you know, sharp uh, without having to rely on using 
Alistair in hand. So Power of the Guardians might come back. Um, Floodgate, you know, they I know decks like that always play Floodgate anyway, so the deck really just need, all you need to do is just replace the cards with Floodgate and you're good. Because Floodgate with Molecule can really like slow your opponent down. If unless they unless they can take on that back row right there and then. It can really slow your opponent down very fast. And I think that's gonna be the primary card that a lot of um, Element Saber invokes are gonna run to. Power of the Guardians and Spirit Karibos are gonna be interesting techs. I definitely suggest Spirit Karibo just due to the unexpected factor and the mirror match. It could be very beneficial for the mirror match, especially with Magellanica being just as scarce. Um, the Spirit Karibo surprise factor can make the difference. So I think that's going to be the changes for the um, Element Saber invokes. Even Mirror Wall might see a resurgence just, be, just mainly for like the mirror match and things like that. Now though, since we do have like, since invokers are probably going to go down a tier, um, well, Element Saber invokes can still keep their spot tier one depending on what they tech in because Mulky was just too degenerate of a, of a monster, especially with the failed spell. And, um, you know, like I said, if they tech in Floodgates, they're still going to be a force to be reckoned with because, you know, people are mainly playing Cyclones and there's just only so much you can Cyclone in one turn and you do lose a lot of life points doing it. So, like I said, like the deck can still be very hard to beat. Um, but yeah, um, Black Wings and Invoke should stay in their spot because there's a lot of other cards to tech in. I think I've crossed um, Black Wings, like, like I said, the importance of playing Black Wing close to kind of slow your opponent down and keep him from making plays. Floodgate as well. Floodgate is a very popular card. Playing it in tier one decks should be a priority just so you can slow down your opponent and come back and do stronger plays. That has been probably the biggest part of these decks, especially with turn one. Um, and yeah, so like I said, there's easy, Floodgate should be the easy replacement for a lot of these cards and your deck should work like it normally does. Uh, like I said, but other techs, I think Sphere is going to have a pretty good resurgence. Um, the problem with probably, like I said, the only problem with Sphere I see is just going against the Ritual Beast matchup because it can't do anything to ulti a Paleo. But other than that, Sphere Creeble is a really good card um, against the Mirror Match and Black Wings and other cards in general. So, you know, Kyroid is not, it shouldn't even be necessary like that. Um, but yeah, um... Glad Kwaki Mirus are back. I am so happy that Diamond Core is back. I love using this card. I really do love using this card. It just looks good. And I, I had some really good TCG days with it. And I had some good days with it in the KC Cups. And back then when we were playing with Kwaki Mirus full power, I had a blast. But yeah, that's my review on this perfect ban list. I couldn't agree more. Some of them took me by surprise. A lot of them I was already expecting, like Concentrating Current. Like country and current, I was mainly gonna see. I was mainly suspecting that to get hit because that card was just way too broken in invocation, and we are to blame for it. <laughs> I can't lie, we are to blame for that. We caused that skill. I mean, we caused that card to get um, um, semi-limited. So, yeah, sorry, but yeah. Also, stay tuned. I am gonna have a highlight reel for the structure deck that we did get cog with this month we did it early in the season i think day three of the season restart of this new revamp season four and season five so i will put up highlights towards the end of the week so definitely look forward to that so definitely subscribe um like i said we got some good things popping up and i know the new box is going to be around the corner so expect that review to pop up on here and watch it live on twitch if you want to follow me there as well hit y'all up next time chop 200 signing out